Right up there, sorry. Right, public session now, function and F8 on our uh, tablets and I need to declare start. any relevant financial or other interest in relation to today's business and there's no one in the public, all right. Um, apologies, none received. Um, well, well, no, everybody was here. here. Um, draft minutes of the meeting on the 5th of November 2015. Okay. Draft minutes are page 16. Would members uh, note those as an accurate record of the meeting? And also, we have the draft minutes of the meeting of Tuesday, the 17th of November, and they're at page three of the tabled pack. So, first of all, the 5th of November, agreed. Agreed. And then the 17th of November, agreed. agreed. Brings us into inquiry into issues around emergency exiting plans, uh, recruiting their impact on stadium capacity for the redeveloped uh, Casement Park Stadium inquiry papers. And there's a, a written submission from Mora at page 20. That has been uploaded to the committee SharePoint on members' tablet devices. Uh, content to note. Thank yeah, you. Can I just ask? Because um, I think, I mean, we, we've asked, I presume, for the all residence groups? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's all. Um, we were told there were three yeah, there, there on were stage. Two, and, then, were and then there was a second one. Where's the, where's the response from the second they, one? They, they haven't made a response. Like, like, if no, if people have been asked thing. to give a response and haven't given a response, then they're clearly not too exercised about this issue. Uh, so I think we just move ahead then. That's fine. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Chair, Chair. Yes. Sorry, right, I mean, I, I would just like to say uh, I wouldn't draw any assumption. I, I would assume that reading the terms of reference, some people feel that they're not qualified to give the technical information, the technical advice that we were the inquiry is seeking. So I would, I would uh, resist the remark made by Mr. Humphrey that. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a slight on the group, well, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't draw that conclusion whatsoever. But we've written out to everybody. Yeah. We've had one response. That's been put into the papers, and um, we can move on. I think. Yeah, I just know they're my constituency, and people are exercised, so it can't be. You should listen to them. Richard. No, Richard. Gordon. Look, just um, sorry. We've got a lot of business still to get right. through. Okay. Can you give us assurance this will form part of the inquiry? This it's, been put it's been put into the papers. It's been added to the papers, that's the point. Yeah. Great, thank you. Ray's briefing on publicly on public funded building liability, and we have with us here Colin Pigeon, who's an Assembly Research Officer, and uh, gives us an overview of considerations for the public sector when construction projects develop defects following completion. That was requested by the committee following concerns about the facade of the MAG. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Colin. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's a very short paper, um, and to be honest, uh, it's not um, anything terribly uh, dramatic to draw your attention to, to be quite honest. Um, the uh, first part of the paper just really just tries to, to tease out what a construction defect is um, and provides uh, two different. Um, there's two different kinds, really, a patent, patent and a latent defect, um, which becomes important uh, in relation to when a defect becomes apparent, and then that has some bearing on whether or not uh, uh, a contractor who undertook the work initially or someone else is required to undertake a repair. Um, there's a short section just with a list of different causes of defects. Now, um, this is quite important because uh, when I spoke to I spoke to one of the uh, technical officers in the Central Procurement Directorate, and the basic feeling was that buildings buildings are complex sort of systems and or, or almost like organisms, and the, and and when 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 you put them up, and as they start to dry out, all sorts of things can happen with them which are a bit unpredictable. Um, but there are certain certain features which can commonly occur. Um, but if you look at the bulleted list on page three, um, so it might be that perhaps the, the building code hasn't been applied with, or it might be that the, the design didn't meet the appropriate standards of care. Um, but the, the important thing is that it could be more than one of these things that's gone on. Um, it could be a combination of these different uh, causes, and therefore it's not always straightforward to work out actually what has happened. 
what's causing the defect in, in the case of the Mac, the, the facing to sort of start to crack and fall off or whatever. Um, now, is that due to the material or is it due to the way that the material's been put on? Is it due to the design or is it due to the way that the contractor has interpreted the design? So there's different elements to that. Um, uh, and in many cases, um, this can be a combination of these different factors. Um, so the, the more interesting bit then is what, well, what happens when something does go wrong, given that it does quite regularly occur that you would have a, some sort of an issue or a snag following a, a construction project. Um, standard uh, practice is that there will be a defects liability period, usually of a year. Um, sometimes it, it seems to be that it can be sometimes for longer than that. It probably depends on the nature of the contract and the nature of the work. Um, and if the defect is observed or, or seen during that defects liability period, it's the responsibility of whoever built the building to come back and sort it out. If it arises after that point, um, because the contract then has, has been completed, um, it's a different situation then. Now, it's up really up to the client to decide who they want to, who they want to come and fix it. You might recall the, um, the contractor who did it originally. You might not. You might say, well, actually, we want to get someone else in to do this. Um, and then we will just simply recover the costs from the original contractor, which seems to be what the... the Essentially, what DECAL told this committee that they were going to do was, was pay to get it sorted out, and then they would seek redress through the courts. So that seems to be, if necessary. Now, that seems to be standard practice, um, and it also seems to be the case that, you know, no, no, in, in, it's not in anybody's interests for these kind of things, particularly on a, on a high-profile sort of public building like this, for it to end up in court. Nobody really wants that, um, particularly not the contractor because it's, they, they have a reputational issue and the department don't want to go to the cost of all that. So, um, so there's a negotiated process. Um, so the, the thing I had mentioned on page five then that the uh, RICS or Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors have produced um, good practice on avoiding or uh, resolving disputes in construction, and if the committee wants to pursue this matter further, um, you know, it might be it might be sensible to ask a body like that, a representative body, to come in and give a more detailed briefing than I am able to give. Um, and then just the, the final point, I suppose, on the last page there is that um, when I spoke to Central Procurement Directorate, who would do most of the procurement for executive departments. Um, I was informed that they didn't do it this time. It was the Strategic Investment Board. They chose to use a slightly different form of, of contract than, than the one that CPD would usually use. So um, I suppose the question is simply for CP, uh, for, sorry, for SIB, well, what, what, what were the reasons for the, the, the different contract and, you know, are they, do they seem to be reasonable? Um, so that's, that's really all I had to offer on that. Um, if there are any questions, I'll certainly. Okay. Um, Cathal? Thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks, Colin. Colin, just, I suppose, uh, I, I didn't see it until that day we were in the MAC there just a few weeks ago. I, uh -huh. kind of just, I was looking at it. I'm not any expert by any means of mm. stretch of the imagination, but uh, you know, it seems to be a sort of a, like a flaking type. Um, there's some quite large bits that come off. I'm just wondering, is there any evidence yeah, because this, this is actually cr crucial to this. It, would there be anything to do with the consistency of the materials used actually in the front that would cause it to go like that? Or indeed, and I'm just looking at the, it's three years, and of course the winter of 2012 was particularly harsh. Would it have been anything to do with actual uh, um, environmental or conditions at that time, do you think, due to I, frost? Or? I, I, I know nothing about construction. Okay, no, 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 it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's, no, it's not, but that's not my, it, I'm just uh, saying that it's, it's so got, it would be cr cr crucial to that, in terms the, of responsibility. The, the, in, terms of what, in terms of those sorts of, I mean, for example, one of the, one of the causes of defects that listed there is the failure so the failure of the contractor to, to execute work in accordance with the plans and specifications. Mm. So if that case, if the contractor, if the say the architect had specified that a certain certain f kind of finish was to be used yeah. on the or cladding was to be used on the building, and the contractor had used a different cladding or of a lower standard or just 
different um, that maybe wasn't recommended for that kind of uh, facing, then you would be inclined to think, well, perhaps that's the issue there then lies with the contractor using the wrong thing. But if it's the architect has specified that particular material and it's been used and installed correctly in accordance with the, the, the correct practice, then then you're thinking, right, okay, well then perhaps the problem is the architect. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it, it, so it's about determining. And, and the only real way of doing that, in some ways it's, this is fortunate in that it's at the front and it's quite obvious where it is. You know, from one side, it, that's unfortunate because it obviously detracts from the building. But from the other point of view, it, it, it's easy to get at. Whereas if you have just cracks appearing in a building, you don't know if it's underneath. To, to investigate, mm. you know, the cause of it is more difficult and probably yeah. more expensive. Sure, just, things, just so. this, this committee visited the night before it was um, Last week. during the construction Week. of it, yeah. and it was been hailed as a revolutionary new concrete process at the time, and the first of its kind mm -hmm. here, and all the rest of it. I'm just, Hopefully the last one's kind in terms of <laughs> just, like this. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying there's more questions than answers here in yeah. terms of that. I think all, all that we can, Colin can do is comment on public liability issues. It's really, all uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, just trying to explain. But there's more of it as well. Yeah. Right? Um, this, this, this methodology or whatever was used, yes. it cuts to the core of who, who's Does. responsible. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know? I think also they're, they're into the legal case now and mm. they'll be fought out in the courts probably. Karen? Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Just in any building, uh, should it be a private house or, or should it be something like uh, 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 the MAC? There's always a snagging list done before handover and final payment. In this case, did that happen or do you know if that happened? I don't know on the specifics of the... Of the um, I'm sure... That, well, actually, no, that's not true. I do know. I, do, I can say that because... Um, because when because it's outside of the defects liability <laughs> period, then it's outside uh, the defects. Yeah, period. the defects liability period is shorter than than what, what it was three years. It would be shorter than that because oh. the standard is twelve months. So, um, so there will be a, a, a notice is issued by the uh, I think they call them the clerk of works, who's yeah. the person who sort of inspects how the work progresses. Um, so at that stage, so that that stage, this this problem hadn't become apparent. Okay, um, so. So, like the like of windows, the like of uh, something sp 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 specific. Can't specific. I can't say the word today. Uh, usually, does have some form of a warranty. Um, you would think, or imagine something like high spec concrete or whatever it may be would have had. In this case, it was basalt stone tiles, I believe. So, yeah. Yeah. Did they come with a warranty? I don't. I can't. I, I can't tell you about that. And that's a, the only. The only thing would be to go back to the. To the department and ask how that. I suppose the thing is now, some time has gone on since you last, you know, has passed since you you last heard from the department on this. So, you know, they may have progressed in terms of figuring out what what where the the responsibility lay. Sure, I have issues. Um, I have issues with uh, um, been told that we're going to spend a thousand or a million pounds uh, for something that that probably wasn't the fault of of this government or, or the funders or whoever it may be, I have issues with let's pay up front and, and buy later mm -hmm. uh, with it. I mean, and I, I'm, I'm taking this on board uh, with another instance where windows cracked along the Probably. Titanic corner and that it wasn't up 12 months and or maybe just after just 12 months months. and um, um, where we ended up having to pay out of the public purse um, for it. And and so, I mean, a million pounds is a lot of money. And, and the crisis that we're in at the minute with the arts and all of the rest, the MAC is a fabulous building, absolutely amazing. And it's sad that it's coming into headlines, I guess, but I think it'd be worse that, that we don't fight uh, properly uh, without payment until it's sorted out. Do you know, also, it's, there's also the issue that's somewhat different here in that the Crony building was a government building in the sense Whereas this is a privately owned building now, it, it, the Mac is owned by whatever the company is called that, that runs the Mac. Yeah, we certainly don't want to see the dilution of any of the services that the Mac give to to the whole region at the minute. Um, but I mean, like, to have a million pound bill put on your door, it, it, it's a lot to, to fork out when when we're not sure of liability. 
And and that to me, there's there's two people would laugh at you. In my opinion, where you want to pay it out, so why would they fight it? Well, there was some one hundred and fifty thousand pounds set aside in the in the redistribution that we had there, the inescapable pressures. Um, I noticed there yesterday then in the monitoring round there was money given to one point one million was given to decal for health and safety issues. I don't know whether that comes in under those. Or not. Sure. I would be happy to. I think it's a valid point to talk about, but this is actually just a research briefing. This yes. thing, it, uh, it is. So, so we're not getting the information. No, no, I'm, I'm supporting you. Yeah, no, we're agreed on that. It's yeah. good that we get briefing. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. But if you wanted to schedule it for a committee, you know, for oh, you know, well, coming up and talk about it, yeah. then that would be something I think we should talk about in proper. Okay. Would, we, would members be content that we return to the issue? Oh, definitely. Um, Colin has done a grand job in terms of. The area of I did my best. Certainly not in my usual area of expertise, I must <laughs> no. say. So um, I've done my sorry, best. I didn't want but, to yeah. come across yeah. that we weren't no, no, getting no, the information. No, no, no. He, he has given right. the, the, the yeah. pro proper facts uh, yes, um, nice around the law. Do you want to come in on that? Or yes, yes, it really is. It's on this here, and I thank Colin for this. But this takes me back to my days in building control hundreds of years ago. But it's clearly one of two things. It's either the specifications at fault or the quality of the materials is at fault. Mm -hmm. In your research, did you find any other uh, reference to buildings with basalt tiles? No, but I, I was looking for what I was looking for was was um, how li liability for defects is resolved, not not mm. anything to do with the materials. To be honest, well, there are no other cases with similar I, fault. I, I don't know. I, I didn't know of very few no. materials that, um, yeah. like that used in other buildings. Mm. Full stop. Mm. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. No, I don't. Could, could I, don't I suggest know. that because I, I'm reflecting back on issues that arose in regard to a number of projects of this type mm. some years ago. There, we, we you have the Arts Council has some sort of role in these things as the main funder. You find the department gets drawn into it. You may well find SIB drawn into it as well. And how we, as a Northern Ireland executive, when we are developing our sporting infrastructure, our, our arts infrastructure, or whatever, how these things are managed, I think that, for me, gets to the bottom of this. Because until you understand that, that helps you to understand the issue of, of the liability. Could, could, I, could we park that issue for today? We'll return to it and maybe look at that issue. Maybe just get a, so, uh, an explanation of the procurement, how it was done. I can remember being down there when with, we were all standing around with the JCB digger. Margaret Ritchie was the social development minister at the time, and they had put money into it, and we had put money into it from the decal side at that time. So there, there, were, there were various departments involved. The Arts Council was there that day. I think it's a good point. I think there's general uh, consensus around the fact yeah, that get let's, some. let's put it on the agenda yes. that, that as soon as... Okay. Okay. And Chair, can we add to that that we get uh, um, uh, the form of contract that was used uh, at the time as well? Preferably in a simplified form. In a simplified, for those in a simplified for, form. For, for some of us, Perfect. yes. Okay. Chair, just uh, you know, the other point which is important is that everyone learns from it. And yeah. that, that you know that yes. measures are put in place to stop recurrence. That's the important okay. thing. And yes, we've sir. seen it time. Us a number of us have been experienced in councils. Seen it time at a number. This happens regularly in public procurement, in major uh, capital expenditure, and it it does re reoccur, and the issues don't seem to be addressed. So I think any lesson that that can be learned, you know, should be, and, and we need to see implementation right throughout the procurement process. Okay. Thank you. Thanks indeed, Colin. Okay. It's been very helpful. Thank you. Brings us on then to item six, which is matters arising. You have the correspondence tracker there. Switch my phone up because it's starting to make noise. Um, correspondence tracker there on the uh, for the nineteenth there, page two three seven. Members intend to note that. Next thing then is uh, what correspondence. So there is an issue in there about DCNI cuts. Is that when do we actually deal with that issue? Well, we, we're due date was the twenty third of the tenth, and we this is now well into. November. 
or received it. We received it. Receipt. Yes, we, we received it. Well, the, the, way, the way we do the correspondence trackers, it stays in for the week after we arrive, it arrived so that members are aware. So it, it, it's actually been with us. It's considered the and fifth. it was considered on the 5th. Mm -hmm. We sent them in. So, if you want to, at some other time in the future, have some issue on the in the final, them. but in the final column, it just it indicates yeah. when it was received. So, there's two that haven't been received. That one was received before, and there's two that are in the pack. Just, I, I want to raise, uh, but I'm, I'm asking for when is the appropriate time to raise it that the ACNI cuts because there was funding that it was uh, announced sure. monitoring around yesterday. Yeah. But we'll come to that. That's in table papers. Okay. Just moving on there. The next one is the. Michael Conlon um, corresponds by with that member's content. Yeah, she's come out. She's come out. Where's she simply going? Then he was here to call. Somebody's left. No, this is mine. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that is yours. That's mine. Right, sorry. Just right for the camera here. Um, somebody's still there. There is Michael Conlon. <laughs> member's content to note that. Still in the list. 6.3. Referring members to decal response at page 240 regarding the Fly Fishing Association and the Still Water, confirmed that the recognition of representative bodies is an issue of government bodies for the sport and not within the department's remit. The department has also provided NIFA with contact details of its inland fisheries group to take this matter forward. Okay. 0.64 and um, Point six five um, are to do with boxing clubs. We have there the issue in six four of um, unaffiliated boxing clubs, and um, then six five is the response regarding Kern Lodge. Um, neither of which take us forward very much. If a club is not affiliated to an internationally recognised governing body, it cannot avail of any funding through the Sport NI Boxing Investment Programme. Sport NI sought legal advice regarding the funding of a number of clubs after learning that they did not intend to continue their affiliation with the Irish Amateur Boxing Association. The advice states that Sport NI would be at risk if it continued to provide funding to unaffiliated clubs. Sport NI has written to these clubs to provide clarification and to learn how they wish to proceed. Um, now, I think this is a matter that I know that, particularly from point six five, then the Kern Lodge Amateur Boxing Club, um, Mr. Humber has slipped out of the meeting for a moment. There, it's an issue that he had raised. The Kern Lodge one, I know he has taken up with um, with Sport NI directly. Would members, um, I think, we'll, we'll, if we put those back to next week when uh, he'll be with us and he can and discuss the issue about, he can raise it then if he wants. We're going. The, sorry, David. Chair, is this is a policy the sport and I have on all sports. Did we find that out? We don't know. It's oh, just boxing. Does it could sort of throws asking? up a couple of wee could, could we check that out? Chair, if, if members are content, then if, if the committee writes to support and ask if that is a universal policy across all, all sports, sports governing bodies. Okay. And then we'll return to that next week. Sorry, Chair, just on that, they, they do make the point there that this is because of lottery funding and it's a plan of lottery funding. Mm. Quite yeah. different. I think that's that's true. that's going to be the issue is, is how many of the actual sports get that and where that fits mm. in. Is it is it useful to get further clarification on that? There's also an issue of the recognition of sports as well, Chair, in terms of funding as well. Recognition of of I just the sport themselves. There are so things like kickboxing which aren't recognised. Oh yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Yes, they don't the, the lottery, as, as Chair, as Mr. Cree said, the lottery funding does come with a lot of uh, criteria. Okay. Caveats. We'll return. We'll part. We'll. Leave those and <coughs> they can return to those next week then. Okay. Uh, six four, six five, six six was the correspondence from Libraries NI to Miss Emma Dunbar. Is at page two four eight. We got it here. And our members um, content with that. Um, in their correspondence, Libraries NI has addressed the issues she raised in correspondence to the committee considered at the meeting on the 22nd of October. I was speaking to um, Irene Knox, and she said that um, they've written back to Emma Dunbar and offered um, her a meeting if she wants to come in and discuss these things further. But they haven't heard back since then, so um, maybe the matter has um, been satisfactory 
resolved to, to our satisfaction. Um, brings us on then to um, 6 7. Get it here. Um, yeah. um, we have the correspondence there from DCMS there, um, from John Whittingdale. Um, in regard to the Irish Language Broadcast and Ulster Scots Broadcast Funds, um, saying that the UK Government is committed to supporting minority language broadcasting, appreciates its importance. As you will know, all public funding must be considered as part of the spending review later this month. Um, it will be completed in November, so we're coming very close to that. The review will set out how the Government will both invest in priority public services and deliver the £20 billion savings required. Uh, no decisions on spending onwards have been made at this stage. It is not possible to guarantee these funds, but however, we have written for their, their continuity. We want to see them continue and increase. And I would stress that DCMS is working with the, in the challenging targets set. You also have then the letter that we had sent to that. Could I just raise um, a, a point there in that context? Um, There was mention last week about parity between the two funds. As you know, one is at the moment £1 million, the other is £3 million. It has the 10-year experience. The other has only been going for, for four years, five years now. Um, it was mentioned in the meeting that there had been no demand from the sector, for um, the Ulster Scots sector, for it to be given parity with the, with the um, Irish Language Broadcast Fund. The two would get the same. Um, so I emailed the Ulster Scots Agency to check that, and I can understand how that misunderstanding has arisen, because um, in the I can photocopy it if need be, but I'll just read the relevant line here. The Chief Executive of the Inclusion made the point that in order to help inform DCAL's position um, in respect of any discussions that there might be with DCMS regarding the future of the fund, uh, he wrote to the Department on the 2nd of November, so it was only um, roughly over a fortnight ago. And one of the points um, was that the distribution of resources should be revised to provide for equality between the funds. Um, however, he points out the letter was sent at official level and it happened relatively recently, so it may well be that the Minister hadn't, it hadn't filtered through to her at that point, uh, that it was still with the officials. But um, the, the position of the agency there, which is set up partly to advise the Department, is very much that there, there, there needs to be. Um, parity there between the two funds. I am pleased to say also, just in that regard, the Minister did undertake to meet with people from the sector, and um, that arrangement is now underway for, for such a meeting. Um, I was wondering if members would be agreeable for us um, to um, write to the Minister um, draw to, our to attention the point about that, there, that we would support yep, the principle of parity, idea. if members were agreeable to that. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it's appropriate, but um, because you know, Ulster Scots and Irish are two different at levels, or they're two different things, really. So, I, I don't think it's appropriate to ask for parity. That, that's my view, you, uh, even in terms of even in terms of the uh, the charter for regional minority languages. One has Selected. part two status and one has part three status. So I think the, the funding should be appropriate to the state stage that the language is in its development. So it wouldn't be I don't think it would be a good use of public funds to to make a parody. Well, um, I think just two points to make there. The charter <coughs> does always look on part two as a stepping stone to part three. And um, an adequate representation in media, television media included, is one of the elements in getting to Part Three. So, it it, it is a, it is something that is to be anticipated that if you are in Part Two, you will move towards Part Three gradually. Um, and this would be a stage in that. I suppose the other thing is too that the viewing figures that we've been given um, show clearly that the the viewing figures for both funds are fairly similar. Um, you know, the the, the top level programmes, not you know, minor differences, and so at all levels, roughly the same. Um, I, I think that, that there's clearly, when we asked them about it, they said that there was the opportunity there, that there, there are enough companies producing programmes, that there's the um, demand for it in terms of viewing figures. And um, 
I would put it again to, to the committee, would they be agreeable to... Um, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Again, like my colleague just had to say, that provided parity is not the word proportionality, might be the word you may be looking for, and well, w with an aspiration to parity at, some, at, at, at a point when development I permits, but proportionality is, as you know... Uh, well, if a, an attempt to be helpful to this, I think the response to that letter was that the Minister had said she had had no uh, sight or that there had been a re request for parity. I think it's entirely appropriate that we should draw it to her attention. So she right, and I'm also absolutely happy for it, that letter to mention that there are members within the committee that think that parity is not appropriate and that we'll be revisiting it at some other stage. So if people want to put it on the record that that's their position, because I understand it's going, I'm happy that that's on the record. But obviously, we would pick it up again at some other stage. Well, um, we could certainly do that. But I think the the key point here is that within a matter of weeks, a decision. It's going to be made. But, but there's a position and we don't have time to talk about it now. I think that the letter should go to say there's a request. I do think that we should talk about it and there'll be a discussion that has to happen. Well, we'll, well we can put it back to next week and have, give people a chance then to reflect on it. That. You can do that, but I, it's, uh, I, it's, I, would be, I would be quite keen, really quite keen. I think it would be helpful if we had a letter out just given the time scale, just drawing to people's attention and putting it on the agenda for next week. All you're doing is noting the positions. It, 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 it seems to me just rather, I have to say, strange, disappointing, that some members of the committee wouldn't support the principle of parity. It, German, can, can I say to you... I'm not talking about yourself, sorry. No, but can I say to you, in an, an attempt to be helpful, I think... Those views are things to be talked out at a later stage, but it would be useful to get down in writing what the particular position is. I, I, I would just be concerned, I have to say, that we don't express a view as a committee in that. If the view that the member is expressing is reflective of the view of her party, mm. um, that would suggest that that's the view that the Minister would take as well, which would be you, you, difficult. You, you don't, if, with respect, Chairman, you don't need to go down that route. The people have raised a issue that they want to talk about. I think it would be useful for all concerned if we noted that the uh, uh, Ulster Scots um, uh, agency had requested parity. I think that's what was in that. And I do think it is appropriate, or people have said here, that that there may be issues that want to be discussed in the future. I think it's entirely appropriate that they, whether it's an, uh, an individual member's opinion or just bits of the committee's opinion, it's entirely appropriate we get that in writing off to them and say we'll talk about it in the right, because we can't deal with it. We don't have enough time to deal with it now, and I don't think it's helpful to push it through at this stage. Well, that may be how it's left today. Um, I think to be honest, we'll be an issue that we'll return to a next week. Absolutely. I, I have no problem with people coming, but you can't deal with it at this stage. But it would be good to get it in writing because time is short. That's the only thing that okay, I would we like. We can write and draw to the attention of the Minister that um, it is the view of the Ulster Scots Agency. Um, could, would members be content to add in there, which has amongst its many responsibilities the role of advising the Department, both for us and it's in the remit under the cross-border bodies that they have the role of advising the department. Um, that that would be um, that that's the view of the agency. Are members content. Members content. To, to yeah, agreed. Okay. Members content. We'll return to that next week then. Um, Can you deal with that? Or I have. To? Right. Um, we have deferred. We deferred the boxing issues to next week, William. Um, that brings us then to six eight. Um, which is correspondence from Libraries NI at page 255, following their briefing to the committee on the 22nd of October. Libraries NI has provided information on percentage reduction per week in opening hours, the actual stock uh, as well uh, from 2011 to date. Members content to note? Great. Um, referring members then to the November monitoring statement at page 6, <coughs> um, Clark. Chair, this obviously was the statement that was made yesterday. We've included the Minister's statement in tabled papers. Um, I don't know whether members have had a chance to see the hard copy. It is there, and I think hard copies may have been circulated to members, as is the sort of normal case um, before they go into the chamber. Uh, there's a couple of particular references to decal that I'll maybe just highlight. Um, Members are aware that the department put in bids of roughly three million, uh, a million capital and around two million in resource. Um, if 
If I can just draw members' uh, attention to the... It's, it's page 15 of the actual document, but annoyingly it won't be page 15 of ours. Just bear with me while I bring up the, the relevant pages there. Um, okay. It's table D. Table D is page uh, 20 in your table pack. So that just gives you the bids that were submitted. Um, it's a very sort of high level thing. It, it just shows the decal bids there of um, resource totaling 2 million and capital totaling 1 million. And then if I take you to table E, which is on page 22 of your table pack, that then indicates what the actual allocations are, and the department got 1.1 million for health and safety obligations. Members will recall there were a lot of issues um, in the ALB estates and so on, things that needed to be done under health and safety. So there's 1.1 million has been secured for that. Chair, and, Chair just on that one, too. we not get a breakdown of that, so we know what we're talking about. That's one of our options we're suggesting. Right. Right. Okay. The other one, Chair, was uh, the Department secured the 300000 that it bid for under TBUC for uh, a variety of programmes, including a youth sports programme. Um, so, if you, if you, Chair, if you want to go see that was really just to give you that sort of those details, the, the rest of the statement is, is there for members to read, but it's, those are the specific detail Okay. Um, sorry, the Provincial yes. Library said I. B69, six, nine, six, nine. which is the November monitoring round from the Finance Minister, page 6, and table paper. Yes. Uh, members are agreed to write to the Minister for clarification on the impact of the statement with respect to the Department's arm's length bodies. And Chair, Mr Crees also asked for then yeah. uh, an unpacking, if you like, of just how that money will be spent. Um, the, the, there was a bid for £1 million for capital infrastructure, which was refused. Um, and then 1.1 million. Actually, if I had the sums don't work out, if you add a million and 1.1 at 1.1, 1 .1, it ends up as still a million, which I didn't understand. Um, somebody got their arithmetic wrong. But there was 1.1 million for health and safety. Since health and safety was built into the money that was redistributed, <laughs> what happens then if that's covered in this health and safety money? Well, that, that turns why we need the detail. I asked the Finance Minister yesterday yeah. 600,000 coming forward by way of depreciation in right. the June bid. Now, is that part of the health and safety thing? I don't know. Sure, sure. But the, the, the reason why that triggered you know, that in, in my mind was that there's 24.4 million unallocated ring, ring fence resource. Well, yeah, not allocated. It cannot allocate it. So that it could have come out of that. Because that was for depreciation and impairment. Mm. I want to follow that one up. Chair, well then, Chair, if, if the committee writes to the Minister to ask what the 1.1 million will actually fund, breakdown of, yeah. breakdown of what the 1.1 million will fund, and do members then want a, a breakdown of how the T Book 300k will be spent, plus getting that money, the impact then on the ALBs, because the Minister had talked about if she received bids, if she, if she got money from the bids, that there'd be a, a way of returning money. Right, we'll, get, we'll get a briefing on. Well, Chairman, can I just on the right, yes. T money? <coughs> some of the protagonists involved have been in touch with some members of the table, and I think some members around the table may know where that money is being spent, perhaps. If they could uh, advise the committee, I don't know. So some members are saying. Can you tell us what members here? Uh, oh, I think you know rightly. Can you know that's not the way to talk about I'm sure it will all become clear because I certainly yeah. know nothing about it. That's the detail. Mm -hmm. Or um, um, a back in the room. You know Chair, some of the all I'm going to say is that some some people who were in front of this committee not so long ago were contacted. Right. By, by member, a member sitting around this table, advising over the, the TBOC money would be available. Um, but so TBOC money couldn't be made available for that. Well, well all will become see. clear. Okay, we'll find out. It is, it is a mystery, uh, the way that money's been shifted it's around from A to B, which is why important we get what lessons are. Sorry, what, what is the TBOC money? More, I've, I've missed a wee bit of what was discussed. Chair, the, the department had bid for 300,000 of TBUC money. Um, one of the programmes that was mentioned in that was a youth sports programme. We don't know any further detail. That bid has been agreed. So in addition to the 1.1 for 
health and safety, there's a, a 300,000 grant for TBUC. Part of the, the um, suggestion for the letter is to clarify what exactly the 1.1 million for health and safety will be spent on, and then how the 300,000 for TBUC will be spent as well. Can, can I suggest then, just following on what Leslie is saying, if we write on this, and we should write, we will get an answer back, and by the time you've gone through that and compared this with that and another bit of here, I think you actually need somebody at the end of the table to answer questions. That's personal view on that. Would members, are members agreeable to that, or would you, are you content just to write? I think we we'll start with that, but you could, could very well be right in what you say. Okay, we'll write first then, and then we may need to do that. Okay, that's fine. Right. Can I just ask? Sorry. Yes. No, sorry. Um, can I just ask then, just going through the. The bids here. I'd be quite keen to. Reading will um, perhaps provide some clarity, but I do think we need to have uh, someone in front of us because I would be keen to know, uh, in terms of the the monies that was re requested, in terms of mm -hmm. city of culture legacy and the Belfast Cultural Festival cult cultural infrastructure. Sorry, just wait. go. Sorry, wait, so, go again, please. Belfast Cultural Festival, uh, cultural infrastructure. That's how it's titled. Mm -hmm. Exactly what that is. Uh, it's turned is it, down. But yeah, I know it's it was turned down. That we know still what it, was, it is. Yes. It shows that the minister's priorities. Are. Yeah. Uh, and so I'd be keen to get answers to those two questions as yeah. well. Well, I think if Leslie, when you were suggesting there, I think if I'm right, that we actually write, but also full clarification. Bring somebody along as well. Yep. Right. Okay. So, chair, just. So that I, I'm, I'm clear on, on what the letter is. The, the letter is seeking um, a breakdown of what the 1.1 million for health and safety obligations is, and the 300,000 for TBUC, and also what the this was the original suggestion. What the implication will be for the arms length bodies, as members will recall, the minister had indicated if she if she managed to get funding in any of her bids, that there might be a way then of um, looking at the money that has been brought back from the ALBs, so that to clarify if there's an impact then for the ALBs from the money that has been achieved in the monitoring round. Am I correct in understanding that? Okay. So the breakdown of what's the bids that have been received and then to see if there's an impact because money has been received for the arms length bodies that had in year funding cuts. I think, yeah. Does that, yes? Okay, yeah. Get an understanding of. So if members are agreed then to that, I'll read. I'll, I'll yeah. um, we're also awaiting some response to material that was promised from the 5th of. Um, when now, Chair, I think we probably have got some table papers. I think we've only got some of the some elements. If you want it with you, and then we can. Well, well, we'll check at the end, but if the, if we may well be back to some of this next week, um, if we have it by then. Okay, that brings us then to um, the uh, six nine, six ten. Um, I get the six ten of this. Some table, six papers. Ten table papers, Chair. <coughs> um, right. Hold on. So, six, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Right. Paper. 610 is the um, written brief. Yes. 610 is the 13 briefings. Oh, yes, in relation. Yes, I have to say, I find that, that rather, all rather bizarre when I, when I read that. Um, if I can find it here, sorry. Nope. We were told that there were 13 occasions on which this committee, page 38, uh, we were told that there were um, 13 occasions on which people were briefed about this. Um, now, if you actually look at page 38, there's the World Police and Fire Games in 2013, and the first one, two, three, most of those down to the one of the 6th of March 14 was the post project evaluation on the outcomes of the World Police and Fire Games. So there certainly were a number of briefings around the year of the World Police and Fire Games. You then jump to the 29th of the first 15 Community Festival Fund. But this isn't the Community Festival Fund, this is a separate thing. 
This is a cultural fund. And then you look at the 5th of March 15, the North West office. There's no mention there. I would say we're actually, that, that is somewhat disingenuous because the briefings um, that were given in March, sorry, on the, in January 15 and in March 15, were not about the cultural programme. They were about some other issues, Community Festival Fund, North West Office. Then there was one about, in March about the cultural awareness strategy. UK City of Culture funding, Community Festivals Fund consultation. These were not briefings on the cultural programme. So therefore, when it came past the first year, yes, there was briefing about that. People were aware of that. But the secretness or the secrecy surrounding the fund in years two and three, there was no elucidation unless they can produce notes of something or papers that were given out at any of those meetings. Um, or, or am I reading that wrongly? Because the minister made a great play of the fact that we had been told about this 13 times. Members content just to note that and let it pass? Or? Yeah. Well, I, uh, others may be content, but I don't recall being told 13 times, and I've been on this committee. I know you haven't, Chair, uh, but I have been on this committee over the last number of years, and certainly have been on it since the World Police and Fire Games. And I don't remember being told 13 times certain things. So, <coughs> if that is the case, should we not be writing back now to ask for what information actually was provided in relation to the subsequent years, not the first year, but years two and three. So it's really from the reference there to the 29th of the first 15 Community Festival Fund, the North West Office, 5th of the 3rd, 15. So it's the last one, two, three, four, five of the 13. What was there in those about years two and three of the cultural programme. Members content that we ask for that information? Yeah, no yeah. That'll get to the bottom of whether... Because it made us look pretty stupid. That 13 briefings, and nobody seemed to know anything about it. About years two and three, that is. And now we find that it's not quite maybe as was suggested there. Um, there is... Brief, details of the 13 briefings is 610. 6.11 uh, 6.11 is the GAA Young Farmers Club issue. Members content to note that or is there... The Chairman, I, I think that was a very useful project um, and you know, I'm not sure why it is. I mean, you know the Grand Lodge of Iron Road to the committee um, and I'm not sure why it is that um, this was discontinued. Um, and I know certainly, uh, I think that the Grand Lodge would be keen to, that that would be the case. So um, I think we should, w they, they having raised it, um, they're clearly the department are saying they have a no approach, they've made no approaches. I read the letter properly you know, to the young farmers for a, for a joined up with the GA. Um, you know, in terms of building a shared future and going forward and, and people understanding each other's cultures, I would have thought, I mean, you made mention earlier on, Chair, about the Silver, Silver Bridge programme. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> indeed, Jarlath Burns is one of the people who's given leadership in this area. Uh, and I, I, would, I would absolutely think that the, the, the project such as this one that has been discontinued for funding is something that should be funded by the executive um, and was making a positive difference. So I, I do think we should write, perhaps write to the Grand Lodge out of courtesy. The Grand Lodge wrote to us, explained to the Grand Lodge that um, what has come back from the department and asked the Grand Lodge for their view on that. As to, um, I would think really Surely, the Grand Lodge of Ireland and the GA would both want this pro project to continue. You know, any other comments to make on that? Do I propose we write to, to, to 
to the Grand Secretary of the Grand Lodge. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. It's been proposed there that we write to one of the participants. Yeah, we do know how to get the GA update on it as well. There. Absolutely. Right Absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's fair enough. Yeah. Write to both. Write to that's both. Yeah. Chair, just can I clarify just the specifics of, of what's going to be in that letter, asking them about... Mm -hmm. Asking them how they valued the project and do they would they... Would they, you know, want us to continue to lobby for the continue? What about um, the young farmers? Are we? Well, the young farmers aren't weren't getting funding, so it, the funding was for the GAA and the, and the order. So, uh, I mean, letter goes to both. Um, Cam will know who to go to, um, whether it's Danny Murphy or whoever. I don't know, but um, a, lo a letter to both Drew Nelson's the Grand Secretary and perhaps Danny Murphy is probably his equivalent um, in the the Ulster GAA and. Um, uh, you know, ask for their thoughts and valuation on the, the cultural awareness program. Yes. So, is the is the Young Farmers Club of Ulster actually the Orange Order? Is that no, 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 no? Why are we writing to the Orange Order? Because is the Orange Order wrote to us about the issue. The, the, the cultural awareness fund was between the GA and the Orange Order. It was nothing to do with the Young Farmers. It's a joint funding package for um, community awareness, good relations type program, and the two um, component parts of it were the Orange Order and the GA. Um, and, and they were funded yep. equally to do some work in yep. schools and so on. And then suddenly it was aborted for some reason yep. or other. Well, the the chair, no, just just to, to clarify again to members, it was a time bound programme. Oh, yeah, yes, and yeah, the yeah. Time scale came to an end. There are lots of time bound pro programmes within yeah. government departments here that get continuation funding. Repeated, yeah. No, and, and I think we're, we're very conscious of the point that has been just made. Um, so we're going to write to, to them, that's fine. Um, Bands Forum 612. Still table uh, papers, members. There's table papers there, it's and 45. it sets out there very clearly. Decal officials, this is in response to the point that uh, John McConway made the day that she was in with the Minister. Um, oh, sorry, no, this is a separate point. This is the point of the press release. They're stating here there wasn't a press release. I've got it now. Um, this, it was actually based on, it was a newspaper report based on an assembly question from Michaela Boyle. It was implied in it that there was a statement, but there wasn't apparently. Um, but it was, I think it was Basel was the one that raised that at the time. Um, he may want to return to that at some point. Um, it's at the meeting of satisfaction, Northwest Cultural, I don't know what the Northwest Cultural Forum is, but um, the members content to note that at this point, and Great. if he wants to return to that. I think we should return to it when Mr McRae is here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll so we refer that to next week till he's back, so he has gone on for a while. Um, then brings us on to 613, um, which is the um, follow-up there from Roisin McDonough um, regarding their um, briefing to us. It's page 49 in table pack, member. There's correspondence there from Dennis McMahon, the Permanent Secretary, to Russia McDonough at the Arts Council, um, setting out the reduction there at £70,000. Um, it is for you and your board to decide how to accommodate this reduction, but in bearing in mind departmental priorities, in particular pets, the agenda, um, pointing out that it will be difficult, and then um, the guidance notes about their lottery fund follow on from that. Is there anything that members want to raise in that context? Are we okay, members content to note? Content to note at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, brings us on then to correspondence from Decal at page 260. That's back into main pack, members. Okay. Then also the uh, Corresponds to page 163, confirming the appointment of Danny McSorley as the new chair of the Safety Technical Group. Are we getting a briefing at some chair, point about um, Just to you refer to the sickness and absence levels. I had mentioned the thing yeah. in passing. Are our members content to note that? Chair, sure, just on that note, the detail did not meet its targets in relation to sickness levels, and it did. It did uh, actually perform slightly better than the Northern Ireland average for the for the civil service, and uh, I take it that a number of those days sick would be um, self-certified sick. Would that be the with normal I, I procedure? Think, um, theirs may differ from what, what we do in the assembly, but a number yeah. of days are. It's usually the, the first sort of week. 
Mm -hmm. Up to a week. Five still. days. Up to five days. And up I'm assuming five, yeah. they're still on that. Now, as I say, ours may be different to theirs, but that would be similar mm -hmm. to what we do. Uh, and then, subsequent to that, there needs to be a doctor's certificate. And do they have a process of actively trying to manage sickness levels? Chair, going back to my days in the civil service, um, I was in Central Personnel Group. Um, yes, there, there's um, active sick absence management. I'm, I'm getting nods as well. Um, there's uh, an efficiencies programme and so on. So sick absence is managed um, fairly proactively. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see the public records office is quite a high level. Yeah, is there any, is there any reasons for that? There's sometimes very small organisations, one person on long-term sick massively skews That's the average, average, and it's a small organisation with only a very few uh, people. There could be somebody there with a particular health issue, and that does skew um, how the stats work. It tends to be um, the bigger the department, the, the less likely that is to happen. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank right. you, sir. Um, we've then dealt with the... Um, Issue of Danny McStory. Are we getting a briefing? Or say Chair, that? we we haven't we haven't asked for that. Um, you're been bringing the the new SRO person in. Yes. Um, we were looking at scheduling that, but there's another issue. I think you'd want it to. If we're going to have an update on the um, departmental spend around November monitoring, and so we were probably going to have to schedule that first, and this would fall okay. further on. Further on. That's fair enough. Um, investment strategy reports, page 165. Then, um, content to note, um, point 0.74 um, was a point Dominic Bradley had raised. Maybe we'll return to that. Well, Chair, no, he, I, I did want to work with him before he left, and he was content with the idea that the committee should write to RTE um, and seek the, and I'm not a technical person, seek the wavelength change that has been suggested in the email so that the service is still uh, available. Okay. It's, it's a technical issue. Yeah, well, if we write to uh, RT really and find out what, what, what all this um, means in practical terms. Link? Did hmm? not send you the link? No. Two. Point seven five, referring members to the cause. You told me that too. Uh, Can he send you a link? No, no that's, for sorry, sorry, that, that's a different issue. That's, that's a different, different issue. issue. That's fair enough. Uh, yeah. So, Chair, um, just to confirm, we'll write to, um, to RT to endorse this wavelength mm -hmm. change. Okay. okay then um, moves on to the annual plan for 1617 from Ofcom, and they're asking the committee's input into this plan, and have highlighted that there is a formal consultation that would take place in the new year. Ofcom will also hold an event in Parliament buildings, then to outline their plans, and members will be invited to attend. Are we contented at this stage and engage with Ofcom through the consultation process and subsequent event? Great. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Decal correspondence at page. 307. Um, no, no, that, that's still me and Pat. That's me and Pat. Right, right, so that's right. 7.6 in the room. Mm -hmm. no. We've kind of dealt with that already. Yeah. More or less been covered. Any other committee that does go through the thing? No, no, no. We oh, right, right. We've dealt with it. Okay. Um, Correspondence at page 310 from the Department, doing an update following the committee review into gaps in child protection across the Cal remit. The Safeguarding Board NI is now included in the Department's Safeguarding Forum. Members were informed of the IFA Safeguarding App, which Sport NI is now considering mirroring for other sports. DECAL is also commissioning a dedicated safeguarding service for the arts and culture sector. Members can tend to note the important progress that's been made at this stage. Great. Chair, okay. just can I highlight, I appreciate um, members will be thinking well, we'd, we'd completed that investigation two years ago, but we did discuss at the time how these sorts of issues need to be dealt with centrally by mm -hmm. the Department for Health um, and Social Services, and that's why this takes that bit longer, that the policy development is centralised and it, it is, it, it's, it's a sensitive and delicate issue, so just to reassure members that it is progressing. Okay, thank you. Um, then, referring members to the issue uh, of the EU matters at page 324, and the next in the series of Meet Your MEP is Diane Dodds MEP scheduled for the 11th of December, which will be in um, the back of the Mac. Yeah, I've all been at the Mac. Yeah. yeah. Um, members content to note again, and point 0.79 corresponds to page 330 from <laughs> Dell Committee regarding their inquiry into post school special needs provision for those with learning disabilities. The correspondence has been issued to DECAL for its contribution. 
Are members content to note? Then page 333, Finance and Personnel Committee regarding their monitoring of savings delivery plans. Um, DECAL had achieved 100% of its saving plans, however, frontline services were impacted upon due to the 1.3 reduction in the Arts Grant programme. There were fewer exhibitions in museums, fewer international students within Armagh Observatory, and some libraries were forced to reduce their opening hours. That's a reference, obviously, to the start of the year cuts, which were uh, can, in some degree, be attributed to Tory austerity as opposed to uh, internal redistribution. Um, 7-11, Tabled Salmon and Inland Fisheries Report 2012-13. Chair, that's um, a hard copy. Okay, we thank have you. that hard copy. Just, we only get one hard copy. We will hold no, it in the office. Um, it's in table paper. But it's in table paper. But the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yes, the whole thing is in table yeah. paper. Somebody's saying. Um, but we also have a hard copy for them. Okay. Hit one is um, page yeah. three four three. <laughs> From Ulster University to the launch of the Social Exclusion and Sport in Northern Ireland report on the 2nd of December 15 at the Jordanstown campus. Bearing in mind this clashes with the committee SILIP event, um, but if uh, someone plans to attend, could they let the committee office know? Could I just suggest there that we um, might like to invite the academics who have done this, yeah. uh, not necessarily to a formal committee meeting, but an informal conversation up here someday and there's some interesting things in it I'm sure some members would like to have gone but if we could maybe look at that um, yeah. it was a suggestion then on Tuesday about um, preparing some sort of a motion that might come to the assembly about um, the uh, arts cuts and Sarah is giving out a hard copy of the chair. This is at the end right. of Tuesday's meeting. Um, members asked for a form of warning yeah. to be brought forward for a possible committee motion, possible committee motion on cuts to the arts. So this is just a memo giving it a bit of background. And at the bottom of that yeah. first page is a suggested form of words. Um, if members want to look at that now, time scale on a, a motion. If there was agreement, I think probably you're you're looking within a two-week mm -hmm. period. I think, um, and it would be a case of um, notifying the business office fairly quickly to do that. So uh, this is a suggested form of words. So essentially, what we're looking for is an agreement to do them to do a motion on an agreed form Great. of words. Great. 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 I, would, discuss this. Okay. I wouldn't mind some more time to reflect on it. Oh, no, so make a decision. Make it we agreed it. We agreed on it Tuesday that we would. If we put it back for another week, then you're into the new year, probably. We should still be able to make it. I think we'd be okay. Um, I prefer. I yeah. prefer to. To put it off until next week, a decision. I propose we just accept it. Okay, it's been proposed that we just accept it. Second, chair. Good. Well, no, uh, chair. Yeah. What, we, what we have is a proposal, and we had an amendment to that. I'm so assuming an right. amendment okay. to that proposal was that right. it should be delayed for a week. <laughs> So, All those in favour well, of I, Chair, can I just ask first, just for procedural? We're only really 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 getting this like one if, if minute. The, two seconds. Absolutely. If the proposer is accepting the amendment, no, we said the thing. If your motion, so then the I amendment. Read it. Sorry, sorry, Chair, just for procedure's sake, the amendment has to be voted on first. Right. So the amendment is that it's delayed for a week for consideration. So Take the amendment want first. To vote on that. Those in favour of deferring for a week for consideration. So we have. I haven't even read the full thing yet. Uh, Please, Chair, just take time. We'll give people a moment. Can I just get clarification? Did, when the Minister came here last week and I asked her about the 32 uh, organisations and the cuts, and she said that she got extra money that she was going to that's what put we're it back in. For clarification, uh, but that's not in the motion. That's not what the motion says. The but it's talking about the 32 organisations. Just for clarification, we're all on for them getting their money reinstated and all of that. that you know, I'm all supportive. But Extra monies that was announced yesterday, is that part of it? Or, you know, so why are we putting the motion in when we don't yet. know yet? We don't well, know yet. <laughs> That's first of all, all the, the, the money that was taken away from the arts and libraries and sport um, amounted to £2 million. Um, we're not sure, <laughs> because it is quite a complicated thing in terms of where money gets moved to. But what we're calling 
here for is for her to listen to the arts sector and um, restore the funding that had been removed. Now, uh, she might want to spend some of the money that she's got on restoring the opening hours of libraries. We don't know. But Chair, in my specific question to the Minister, I specifically asked her in her, in her reply to me about 32 organisations that uh, their funding was cut, which is related to in this, which which is the 620,000 out of the 870. I and she said that in her response, I would need clarification on that before. But I'm all on for them getting uh, uh, the money we, we allocated to them, but she did say they got extra money. That I mean, you can look up Hansford. I did make specific reference to it. Uh, that's what I want clarification on. Uh, uh, before you know, when it's in this. We might be making agents of ourselves, but the time this comes to the, the house for for a hearing, it <laughs> might be sorted. That's all. Um, the issue there of she has money given to her from Keybuck. She got money for it. Nobody knows where that's going, and that that is part of our problem. The, the shambolic way, quite frankly, that the finances are handled there. The money is moved from A to B to C and back to D and somewhere else. Very, very. It's almost impossible for a committee to scrutinise, to scrutinise this properly. There's no other department I'm aware of that operates in this way. It is the plan. You're absolutely right, Leslie. Chair, we have asked for a breakdown. We have asked for, for clarification. We've asked uh, okay. members have, have agreed to write to the minister for, for, a, for a clarification. How long will that take in our experience? I'm, because I'm, there's some questions that we ask, asked uh, that we didn't get answers for well, today. Well, what we'll do is... Fact, we going to get them for next week? We can specifically ask. Yep. We'll get them for next week or else we'll go ahead. We, you know, we can go ahead. We'll bring it back for next well, week. We'll bring well, it back. Well, I'll start the MMI proposal. Okay. 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 That, we, that we go ahead with this subject to answers coming next week. If they don't come next week, we go ahead with that. In other words, if you don't get the answer you want, I'll go ahead. No, no just answers. Say that. Just answers. Said answers. So oh, the clarification okay. that the committee was yeah. asking for, are, are members content with that? Great. Great. Next week we'll and it needs to be, I'm sure that it will be carried back to the department. Chair, the so if members are content with that approach. Okay, so yeah. just give What's me a point again. We are at, sorry, we're, we're saying that we want clarification on all of these movements of money around what they're for and that question around what was in the monitoring round, uh, what was the cultural infrastructure money for? Yes, all of these cultural things. infrastructure money. Yeah. Yes, we need to get all of that information by next week. Now, we could do that by bringing somebody here and asking them. We can do it in writing. What, what is on our agenda next week? Uh, Chair, next week we have back to the arts yeah, yeah. Uh, inclusion inquiry yeah. to try and finish that off. Mm -hmm. Also, BBC response. For the um, consultation, uh, for the, the consultation we've done, we'll have closed by then. We're looking to get them. Well, it needs to be made absolutely clear to the department. We want answers to these questions that are clear and simple and comprehensible, and we know where money's been moved to and from. Um, the, and then we'll come back to that next week. That's I think what has been proposed. So defer to next week. Uh, subject with that caveat. Answers coming. and it's a strong caveat. Um, the I'm next item. Just, just sure to get ensure there's there's agreement on that. Okay, I think no, we have the exceptional happens, like, you know. Sorry? Uh, that sounds as if we don't get the answer you want, we'll go ahead. You know what? You've got to wait till the day come back with the about? answer you want. No, no, we just want yeah, an answer. Yeah, well, you've got to wait till we'll the back, you know. Yes, well, well, hopefully we'll get an answer next week. Right. If we defer the issue. The statutory role of this committee of is to scrutinise the department. Yes. Absolutely. We have asked questions, some of which have been answered, some haven't. It is absolutely, uh, I think, justifiable for members to ask questions when we have figures that have been presented to this committee today around and suggesting potential spending and the minister wanting to spend over a million pounds mm -hmm. on legacy stuff for London Day and a cultural, um, another cultural fund for Belfast. Right? I think that, uh, we're absolutely entitled to ask those questions. If the, if the department doesn't answer those questions, then that creates more questions and answers, frankly. But we are entitled to ask I, I would doubt today if any member of this committee could actually stand up and explain what is going on in terms of these finances, because it is a constantly moving feast from day to day uh, as information unfolds. And one of the difficulties I find with, with the work of this particular committee is that we're given answers that are partial, sometimes disingenuous, 
um, certainly not contributing in any way to helping the committee fulfil its statutory role. Uh, I, I, I simple another example away from this, taken away from this for the sake of argument. We had screen NI screen in, and we had the chief executive in who told us that in the meetings that uh, of the uh, Ulster Scots Broadcast Fund Committee, nobody had ever talked about an evaluation. And they were like, we got in our pack there the minutes of the meetings, the word evaluations there at a meeting that he chaired. The whole thing is bizarre. People seem to have a very lax view of what they, is required, the standard of probity that's required. Now, let's move on for today. Simply note that, and we'll, we'll come back to that again next week. Um, referring members to the forward work programme at page 345, and invite the clerk to speak to that. Chair, just particularly to flag up um, the fillet um, event scheduled for the Wednesday, the 2nd of December. SILIT is the Chartered Institute of Librarians and Information Professionals. Um, the committee has agreed to host um, uh, an event for them. It'll be in room 115. It's a, it's a, a lunchtime. And we'll send you more details in due course. Okay. That's really the only one I was going to That's find. That's fine. Brings us nearly to the end here. Date and time. Of, oh, sorry, any other business? Yeah. Yes. Um, Chair, I have a, um, two, two issues that I want to raise in relation to um, a match at Windsor Park at the weekend. Um, it was reported in the media that um, th that the uh, the visiting team were were put in a, in a pla in a position where they had to go through what they described as a building site. So there were complaints about the state of the ground. They said it was. Dangerous. Some person actually fell, got injured. This, this was in the Belfast Telegraph, and uh, must be true. Then. Well, I'm only joking. Chair. Yes, well, I, I spoke. It was Cliftonville and yeah, uh, Lenfield sure. were playing, and I spoke to the chairperson of Cliftonville, who confirmed that a person had been injured, and he said that the state of the the pathway that they had to use was unsafe, dangerous. Her lighting. I don't know if even if there was lighting, but major complaints. My concern is, and given this committee's uh, interest in ground sports ground safety, how did how did that get a safety certificate? And I think we should be asking Belfast City Council how were they able to issue a safety certificate? Now, what what? What has been said is there was very unusual heavy rain, but heavy rain doesn't make potholes, doesn't make rubble. The state of the ground was made worse by heavy rain, but it didn't create the conditions. So Any other members wish to comment on that? I wasn't there. Sir, further, I, just, I also heard there was a broken gas pipe actually at one occasion, and I think it actually is not even in reference just to last. Uh, Saturday's game. I think there was reference to the, pre the game the previous evening, and a game even a fortnight previous to that. So there's obviously, you know, uh, and there was also some concerns about accident arrangements. I think from the north stand. Uh, so uh, you know, there's a there's a raft of stuff there. I think we should really be thinking about. Um, sorry, go back to back to what then? Oh, sorry. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I would I would actually be interested in uh, hearing from. Right, right. The, uh, well, we could write to Office City Council asking for them to explain, or ask them to come to the committee to explain, because it has been a huge issue for the committee, and I know we're all concerned about safety at sports grounds. And I mean, this this is one where actually a person got injured. Yeah, yeah Chair, I was at the game on Friday night, and I was at the game on Saturday, um, and. You know, to be quite honest, it, you know the, the weather conditions were foul both days, and and the ground underfoot wasn't good. But I mean, I my understanding is that um, when I was in touch with Linfield Football Club um, after the game, my understanding is that you know, with an expectation of, of you know from both clubs and Linf Linfield were in communication with Cliftonville that. Um, there was an expectation that there would be some difficulty, given that there was a game the night before, at which 12,000 people attended, mm -hmm. and there was no incident. Um, but um, someone who worked in, for a company that dealt with dealing with potholes, heavy rain can cause potholes. First point. <laughs> um, there may well be issues around the ground, um, 
And there are other issues that I have with the game on Saturday, not least the behaviour of certain fans and what they were singing and shouting. So, um, in fact, it was appalling, grossly sectarian. And so I'm happy that these, these things are raised and raised once and for all because there are health and safety issues and cost implications, as there are when Linfield fans have to travel, pay extra money to go to solitude. So, you know, if there has to be a bit of latitude, one ground, there should be... People need to remember, we had appalling weather, and this is a ground that's under construction. Now, if it passed a certificate for EF the night before, it's hard to see how it would feel for an Irish League game the night after. But I'm happy that those questions are asked, and the view of both clubs should be taken into consideration. Both clubs. Um. The, the, sorry, yes, Oliver. No, Oliver, were you, sorry, Oliver, were you going to say something? Can I, I was, I, and can I also say that uh, the, uh, at Windsor Park, the flying of a flag and the chanting towards the, 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 the supporters, the flag was no surrender, no, no apology, and was a, 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 the branding of the parachute regiment on, on, on the, on the, uh, Flag or the the. the, the I think the, I think we're we're, 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 so, no, we're getting far uh, off the issue. Well, no, my Mr. Humphrey did allude to it, and he wasn't uh, stopped. Yeah, so is I'm just alluding to it as well. That I, yeah. yes, let's get the whole thing out in the open. The issue that's, the issue that was raised by Mrs. Uh, McCorney was about safety. safety. Now let's. It, it's been suggested that um, we write, I think, to yeah. both clubs mm -hmm. to to get there rather than go on a newspaper that's account. Right. Or whatever we ask both clubs to put in writing, <coughs> but their understanding. But it needs to be remembered, Chair, that the ground is on a 50-year lease of M right to the Irish Football Association. Mm -hmm. So, so the ground is actually so right to the IFA. The IFA. Right. Right to the. All right. Without, without. Well, I've been in touch with the IFA. They've confirmed that uh, the, about the incident that happened, but they didn't give me much more information. Uh, but I'm concerned. That uh, about safety at sports grounds, we have been concerned about it. So I think it would be disingenuous and be wrong of us not to react whenever we have a clear case of where the safety wasn't what it should have been. So I think we should write to see to the council to see how, how, the, how the certificate was issued. Right. Uh, is the certificate issued for each game? No, not necessarily. So therefore, the, the, the certificate would have been issued. I don't know the insides of it at all. Um, maybe it is. The only, these folk know more about football than I well, would. Windsor Park's in the hands of a stadium management company now. Uh, right. So there would be people there. There's also be reports on the afternoon uh, events to the observers at various levels. Should it be a match observer? And so on and so forth, safety people and whatnot. So there should be plenty of documentation available as to what actually. Uh, uh, who do you get that documentation or, uh, from? Well, I think well, the city council. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure Sport have evidence as well. Yeah, but, uh, but ultimately, and we have learned, we've learned a lot over the inquiry, oh, and we know that the council oh, is responsible ultimately for issuing certificates. The council, the council should be notified, and then they'll write to what's called a qualified person who's in charge of that, and they will then. Bring the information back again. But, but does it not, as we heard and hear, the City Council have overall authority on health and safety? That's sports training. Um, am I correct, man? Um, First of all, um, yeah, yeah, fast, fast, uh, no, just, just to make it. The Sports Grounds Advisory Group in East District Council area, and they work as a team there, the Council of the Blue Light Services. Oh, well, that's fair enough. Right. Rosie sent right to the Council, yeah. and then they can um, maybe glean out information the rest of the Mrs. McCauley has raised an issue here. Um, we, are, we have no direct evidence other than um, what was in the papers, or, or there may be some other evidence about it, but I'm not there, aware of it. There's evidence there if you want to. Well, no, Chair, it's different. There's we're two dealing issues. with the safety issue. Oh, no, no, no. There's the health and safety issue, Could, and then there's a second issue. Well, I think we deal with the, the health and safety issue, which was the one that, that, that was initially raised. Um, I'm sure there are other lots of other issues we could go into, but if we just stick to the key issue. Um, 
What did that mean you there? What this mean? is all I want we can go into. Sorry, please, Mr. Uh, Wait, just let's. Oh, you you sort of threw that one out there and carried on. What do you mean? I, I was saying we. I did say we would stick to the real issue, the main issue that was oh, raised. The real issue. Sorry, if you let, let me finish, please, because it's now half past one. We'll be here all day. We 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 need to. Uh, so. The point's been raised. It's been suggested that a, a couple of letters be sent off to get some information so we are better informed. Um, are members content to, to do that? Chair, Chair just check. so I can clarify who it is I'm writing yeah, to. That's where it comes up. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Now, the, clearly, you'll at this point declare an interest as a member of the IFA board if they have some yeah. role or other, whatever it is. Or not. Um, but could you, could you give us advice on two? I think the City Council is, is an, an, sort of certainly nipple under whose match the game was being played. Right. Not, not right. Football league. Would members be content that yes. the member who has a better understanding than most of us uh, explain to give the relevant details to um, Peter? Sorry, City Council, I've got nipple. Yeah. Yeah, not not football football league. League. That was the, under the auspices right. the game was played. And they will you, have appointed observers to be at the game. We should. If, if, if okay. do a report, get in touch with and, we should do that. Have you any other suggestions? Well, I think obviously the ground, the, the management company for the ground, need to be written to. Yeah. Right. Well, you need to take time to the IFA. I'm not Peter. They will be able to do that. But, but that will be the IFA. But Linfield have represented us on that as well, obviously. So, the management company for the ground, Niffle and City Council, those three. That's and they'll garner all information. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Great. No, Thank you. Get another item. The, the second item was just in relation to, and again, I read about this in, in the newspaper, and it was relating to the, the uh, banner that Mr um, McMullen referred to. There was a banner at the match, there's a photograph of it, but it was offensive. But I'm, what I'm saying is it's not the standards that we expect. People. We, you know, we've moved on in terms of soccer and, and how people experience matches. There shouldn't be any sectarian displays, commentary, and I know what happens, but whenever it's highlighted, and this was a banner which people found very offensive, and I, I mean, I think that we, we've got a responsibility to, to well, do think, what we can to address one, uh, one of the things here is that we don't extend the remit of the uh, committee so wide that we'll be here until about one o'clock in the morning, never mind one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, there are many things that happen at matches um, in a number of sports that different people will find unpleasant or unpalatable or whatever. If we're to start to go down the road of this happened at this match, next week we'll be back because something happened at a ground somewhere else and something happened somewhere else and what did he say and what happened in that pitch? The, the, the committee would be doing nothing but that. Sure, the IFA is a public funded body and has a responsibility and has made commitments in the past to address this. Yeah, there was a big sport for all project. I think we could oh, make, indeed, yeah, make yeah. good headway, but I think it wouldn't do mm, any harm good. if we were to write to IFA Sport NI to ask them about what they're doing to address the, um, issues of sectarianism. That is nothing. Yeah, I think there need to be a trade sorry. across the board, Chairman. Yeah. Sorry, just of course not. Well as well. Sorry, sorry. Look at the sorry please, the just one at a time. Mm -hmm. And he, if we just have one person at a time is, to get this finished. As Mr. Hillich just alluded to in the previous issue, uh, Irish Football League games are not organised by the IFA. They are organised by the Northern Ireland Football League. You wouldn't write to the IFA. Right. And everybody that over the street know that the IFA have done great work around this issue. So let's not sully the name of the IFA and try to link it to this. If, you know, I don't know where the members across the way want this to go, but I'll tell you, if that's where you want to go with it. I was at the match. I didn't see the banner because I was at this end of the stand. But I did hear... There's the banner in there. I just say that. Sorry, just uh, please. Um, I mean, there are things that I would also want to start bringing to the yeah. table because I have mean, correspondence I mean, from a constituent you know, recently about events at another ground yeah. um, involving um, the uh, involving things that would be totally inappropriate at a publicly funded pitch, um, and I would be happy to to bring those to the table as well. Um, so we could actually end up where we'd be here for a very long time going through all of these. We need to be. Um, and and I, I don't think we're going to get anywhere with it. 
Um, so I'm going to move on because I think we can spend far too long on things that are really of. I have other correspondence if you'd like to take it. Right. Okay. Any other business? Certainly. Uh, yeah. Just on the the motion that you're proposing for next week. Um, I suppose uh, the media know a lot of information before ourselves, and it's just been released on the media that the 32 um, organisations are to uh, get their funding restored, which adds to an amount of 620,000. And I'm absolutely delighted that mm -hmm. the minister took my advice and <laughs> uh, uh, at the committee meeting, because this was so important. We all met in the steps with the organisations and, and the cuts to the arts. So I'm delighted for the Arts Council. I'm delighted for the 32 groups that uh, uh, the money is being restored, because at the end of the day, it's our communities that benefit. So and where do we go with the motion, Chair? Well, I think first of all, the I still um, go with an motion. Now let's get the flipping information to this committee here. First of all, um, it is disappointing that information is released uh, very generally without respect to this committee. But I stand by what I said earlier. So members of this committee knew that was going to be done, and and and, and a member of this committee has evidence that that was the case. Well, they did. Mm. The I know. Yeah. Um, it's my urgent. The um, We'll return to this, of course, next week because we will be getting um, a presentation from some officials about how money has been moved about from A to B and C and so on. But, Chair, to be, fair, be, to be fair to, uh, and, and I did highlight it before I even seen the headlines on the news, that the Minister did indicate to the committee when I asked the question that if she did get additional money, that the 32 yeah. organisations would. Would get it back. I'm, I'm only highlighting that. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Let's bear in mind the 32 organisations have got their money back, but because of the way that she redistributed money, libraries in your constituency and other constituencies have been hit. How much was taken off libraries NI? How much was taken off sport NI? In order to fund projects that were of her choosing. That's the issue. This is bigger than arts organisations. Just say that in the motion. No, sorry, I'm not talking about the motion. But I was. Sorry, I'm talking about generally, and I'm sure you would share my concern Absolutely. with the cuts to libraries, Absolutely. cuts to sport, in order to fund the yeah. minister's pet project. The, 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 the other thing about Ms. McKevitt's con contribution there is, and I welcome that funding as well. Absolutely, we all do. Uh, but this is about redistribution of money. Mm -hmm. this, they only got this money because there's new money has become available. There was clearly redistribution of monies well, well, that was that was going into to, to ensure that money would be taken out of that sector and put to other use. Now, what has to be remembered is, in the eight hundred seventy thousand pounds cuts to the Arts Council, that they, remember the Arts Council had to basically um, well, sorry, uh, a quarter of a million pound cut within their budget. Which has had an effect on the Arts Council as an organisation. And that's why I made the point a few weeks ago with this committee that, that this minister is about undermining the Arts Council. Mm -hmm. she's been, that's sorry, that's please that's don't interrupt. That's that's I will not be dictated to what I can say and can't say. Yeah. I'm saying what I believe, and there's facts to base it up. It was put to the minister by both Mr. McRae and I a couple of weeks ago when she was here. Now, a quarter of a million pounds. That they have had to in-house save as an organisation. There's other money that should have been going to the Arts Council that was given to the West Belfast Festival to distribute. This minister is about undermining the Arts Council. I mean, nobody should be in any doubt about that. Um, personal view on this is that uh, I think she hopes that by restoring, that it also refers here to restoring money to Sport NI, but it doesn't refer to library. Just if I clarify. Um, I've gone into my press emails, release. just at a press release from the department. Um, um, which is extremely discordious in that the press release is issued during the meeting of this committee. Yeah. Um, and uh, as you rightly said, because you were able to tell me at the start of the meeting, no. um, that some people. Where's the, where's the hundred thousand pounds? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. um, you might then want to raise that point, William, because if we're dealing with this hundred and other business, we might care to write actually to the yeah. minister and ask. Will she now be reinstating the, for the, uh, the, the, the instrument fund for yep. bands? <laughs> okay. At all bands. Sorry, did you? £100,000 for bands, because that, that particular scheme has always been open to all bands. It's open and trusted. Open yeah. to all bands. Absolutely. How many letters are we now writing to the minister? Any it takes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can I just. Sorry, just uh, so before we, people want to leave, Gordon. I want to go anyway. If people, uh, are you making a proposal, Mr. Fund, for yes. that effect? Okay. It's been proposed that we write regarding the reinstatement Thanks. of the Musical Instrument Fund. Is there a seconder for that proposal? 
Well seconded. Okay, so it's seconded. Is there an amendment to the proposal? Chairman. I think we should write to the Minister congratulating her on. Sorry, just a minute. Is there an amendment to that proposal? Can't stay with us here. No. No, there isn't an amendment. Yes. Okay, we've got a motion, and it's been seconded yeah, that we write so uh, calling for the reinstatement Great. of the New Zealand Instruments Fund for Bands in view of the fact that the Minister has obviously received additional money. All those in favour, please indicate. It's all bands. It's all bands. It's all bands. It's all bands. It is all bands. Yeah. In fact, one of the recipients of it was the uh, was a band from my own constituency, chair, chair, just, um, just which was named after two former members of uh, the provincial IRA who chair, were killed uh, in action. Chair, procedurally, I, I just need to know if there's an actual vote has taken place there. A proposal has been made. It was fully supported. So, so th there was no vote taking place. Yeah. That's fine. Well, there was nobody against it. No, right. that's fine. Just so I understand. Okay. Sorry, just Chair. before we finish, um, then the next meeting will take place on Thursday, the 26th, in room 30, when the committee will consider the responses received on the BBC Charter renewal consultation. Thank you. Thank you.